Hi, thank you for joining me. My name is Jolene Morris, and in this screencast, I will show you how I make keto pasta using lupin flour and the Phillips Pasta Maker. I have made my own pasta for years, but since going keto, I make it with lupin flour instead of wheat flour. You could eat a large bowl of wheat-based pasta, but you would be hungry again in 20 minutes. Lupin flour pasta is more filling, so you use a smaller serving size. I use a Phillips pasta maker. Each batch makes four servings. But the challenge isn't in making the pasta. It's in cooking gluten-free pasta. Gluten-free pasta has a tendency to get gummy, mushy, or stick together if you cook it too short of a time or too long of a time. Out of my 25 meals, 11 of them require pasta. So I am making pasta on a regular basis. As I said, I use the Philips automatic pasta machine. You don't need an automatic machine, but I've used one for years and I wouldn't make pasta in any other way. The Philips pasta machine comes in two sizes. The larger machine is currently on sale for $100 off. The price is less than $200, and it comes with eight shaping discs. That's less than I paid for mine several years ago, and mine only came with four shaping discs. I had to buy the extra four discs that I needed for the different types or styles of pasta that I make. Compare that price of $200 with a pasta-making attachment for a stand mixer. They cost almost $100, and then you still have to do almost everything yourself. The Phillips Pasta Maker comes with eight shaping discs, a cutting tool, a cleaning tool, a measuring cup. Make sure that you use this measuring cup for your flour. It's not a traditional measuring cup. It also comes with a recipe book and an instruction manual. Making pasta in the Phillips machine requires only three ingredients. One Phillips cup of lupin flour, one teaspoon of xanthan gum, and one egg beaten well, and then water, of course. Each batch makes four servings. The entire process is automatic. It takes 10 to 15 minutes. I use Anthony's organic lupin flour. Anthony makes two versions of lupin flour. One is called premium and one is called organic. The organic lupin flour is not only organic, but it's sweet white flour that doesn't have that nasty taste to it. Flour always needs to be sifted, so I use a PrepWorks flour sifter. The thing I like about this sifter is that it has a cup underneath to hold all of the sifted flour so it doesn't get all over the place. It has double stainless steel sifting loops and mesh, so it's two times faster than traditional sifters. Of course, it's BPA-free and dishwasher safe. When you make the pasta in the Phillips machine, the first inch or so of the pasta that comes out <laughs> is ugly. It's kind of misshapen, so I cut that off and throw it back in the machine to recycle it. Let me show you what I mean.
Once you have made the pasta, it needs to rest at least 30 minutes to allow the pasta time to finish absorbing the moisture. There are four methods you can use to store your pasta. Of course, after the 30 minutes rest, you can cook it and serve it immediately. If you're going to be using it tomorrow or the next day, you can refrigerate it. If you're used to fresh pasta from a grocery store, that is semi-cooked, so it does last a little bit longer in the fridge. But homemade fresh pasta is raw and will last at most two days. If you don't need it right away, you can freeze it. In the freezer, it will last six to eight months. But if you're not going to be using it almost immediately, your best option is to dry it. Dried pasta will last four months to a year. Pasta will dry thoroughly in 12 to 24 hours or a little bit longer. You can speed the process up by using a fan or a low temp oven. I use the dehydrate mode in my oven. Consider using a desiccant pack to keep the moisture out for long-term storage. Many reviews say that this machine is hard to clean. I don't find it difficult at all. Let me tell you what I do. Disassemble all the parts. Remove any large excess dough pieces from the mixing paddle, from the shaping disc, from the mixing chamber, and from the disc holder and then let all parts sit out for several hours so that the pasta dries. Then you can just brush off the remaining dough and throw it in the dishwasher. Let me show you how I clean the machine. Rather than use a large pot on the stove top, I use my instant pot pressure cooker on saute mode in order to cook my pasta. Let me explain how I do that, then I'll show you. Fill the pressure cooker pot two-thirds of the way with cold water. Season liberally with salt and add a little ghee to the pot. Then I bring the water to a rolling boil. It helps to put a glass lid on the pot in order to boil it faster. Once it's at a rolling boil, turn off the heat. Then place the noodles in the Instant Pot basket and place that basket of noodles into the pot. Gently stir it. But it cooks in only 60 to 90 seconds. 30 seconds more if you're putting it in frozen. If you are using frozen pasta, just put it directly into the boiling water. After the 60 to 90 seconds, drain it and then rinse it in the cold water bath for 10 seconds to stop the cooking process. I have an extra pressure cooker pot that I fill with ice water. 
I simply remove the basket from the pressure cooker and place that basket in the ice water pot. Be sure to leave it in the ice water for only 10 seconds. You don't want to cool down the hot pasta. You just want to stop the cooking process. Finally, toss it with ghee and serve. Let me show you. Thank you for joining me today to learn how I make keto pasta. Next, you should watch this video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.